Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T-Pow, and welcome to my 2021 bullet journal setup, which surprisingly is not going to be in a bound notebook this year. I'm moving into a binder. Long story short, there was an incident involving a smoothie. But that's all I'm gonna say because this video is not about dwelling on the past, it's about looking towards the future. So without further ado, here is my 2021 bullet journal setup. So I feel like in years past, whenever I make a welcome page for the new year, I make it and then I never look at it again. And something that I see a lot of people do that I really like is they have a page in their bullet journal where they make a collection of all of their themes for the year. So what I decided to do was combine the welcome page and that concept. So my welcome page is also going to serve as a collection of all of my themes for the year. So using my angle and circle maker, I divided the page into 12 equal sections. I can't imagine trying to do this without this tool. It makes it so easy because all I had to do was divide 360 by 12, which was 30. And then all I had to do was keep the zero at the top and draw a line every 30 degrees. And it perfectly divided the paper into 12 sections. So at the end of every month, I'll come back to this page and I'll draw something in each section that represents that month's theme. And then at at the end of the year, it'll be a collection of all of the themes for that entire year. So with that in mind, I decided to keep the design of the page super simple with a black circle in the middle with the year written in gold. And surprisingly, my favorite metallic pen these days is this very inexpensive Uniball Gel Impact 1mm metallic pen. I actually got it at Walmart in a pack with gold, silver, and white. And spoiler alert, you'll be seeing this pen quite a bit throughout this setup. Moving on to my 2021 at a glance, I decided to keep the gold theme going and I wrote 2021 in gold. And I decided to add some pink because my binder is a blush pink. So I wanted these pages to mesh well with the design of my binder. So I used Tombow Dual Brush Pen number 761 for this pink. And this is another color that will be reoccurring throughout this setup. Whenever I have to write a ton of numbers, my favorite marker to use is my Tombow Twin Tone in black. I use the thinner side, of course. And as always, the yearly setup involves quite a few tiny numbers. And on this page alone, we have, you guessed it, 365 tiny numbers. And I'm also very happy to say I did not make any mistakes in my at a glance because that is my biggest fear is getting to the end and making a mistake and having to start all over again with these tiny numbers. Next is my goals page, which I kept pretty simple to leave a lot of room to write my goals. I kept this color scheme simple as well with gold and black, but instead of using the Uniball pen, I'm using my Kelly Creates brush pen in gold to color in the middle circle. I mentioned briefly in one of my Vlogmas videos that this year I'm kind of looking at my goals in terms of different projects that I'd like to complete, which I've never really done before, but since we are in quote unprecedented times, I figured it would be a good year to try something different. But I'm dividing my goals into four categories, which are personal, career, fitness, and finance. Next is my future log, which I'm keeping very simple. Last year, I divided it into categories and that didn't really work well for me. So this year, I'm kind of going back to the classic design. So I just used the gold brush pen on top and the pink Tombow 761 to highlight the days of the week. And sometimes on my Instagram, I'm asked how I highlight words without smudging. And the short answer is I don't. Anytime I'm going to have color underneath black ink. I always put the color down first and then I write on top of it. That way it never smudges and I don't get black ink on my colored pens. Obviously it does take some planning ahead to do this, but I am all for sketching things out and planning them ahead of time before using ink. So it's usually not a problem. And with these pages, we're quickly adding to the tiny number count because even though my at a glance is one page flip away, I somehow feel the need still to have monthly at a glances in my future log. That's just the way I am, folks. 
there's no explaining it. In these next few spreads, my circle maker is going to get quite the workout. I don't know what came over me, but I went a little circle crazy in this video. But this is my birthday spread. Some people like birthdays to be in their future log. I like to dedicate a spread just to birthdays. And just like last year, instead of dividing birthdays into the months, I am categorizing everyone by their sun sign. So each box will represent a different zodiac sign. So in the bottom of each box, I've drawn the constellation associated with that sign as well as the symbol for the sign at the top. I know this is almost exactly what I did last year. The only difference is that I put the constellation on the bottom and the symbol on the top, which is the opposite, but I liked it so much and so did you guys that I couldn't think of a reason not to recreate it. The color scheme is also different. Last year it was that dark blue color and this year it is gold. Continuing with the astrology theme, the next spread is all about the moon. This year, I made a lot of changes to my journaling routine. I won't get into it because I have an entire video about my journaling routine if you're interested, but one of the things that I incorporated into my journaling routine was moon journaling specifically for the full moon and the new moon. As of recording this, I've been doing it for about six months and I'm really enjoying it. And I know that I'm going to continue into 2021. So much so that I bought a moon journal specifically for moon journaling. And that is what inspired this spread. The first page focuses on moon journaling itself. So I have all eight phases of the moon from new moon to waning crescent and next to each one I've written the theme and the meaning of each one as it relates to moon journaling. And this is taken straight out of my moon journal which is the book I talked about in my stationery haul. I've also listed out the unique names for each month's full moon. Really there's four or five names for each moon so it varies depending on the list you're referring to but each one is significant it to moon journaling in a different way so I just wanted to have a quick at a glance of the names of the full moons. This next spread is the one that took the most research, the most planning, and the longest to create but it was totally worth it because I think it's my favorite of the entire 2021 setup. It is also a reminder of one of the huge benefits to doing my bullet journal in a binder this year. Usually when I use a bound notebook for my bullet journal, it doesn't last the whole year. And I think most people have a hard time fitting an entire year into one notebook. So even though I spend all this time at the beginning of the year making a future log, making an at a glance, blah, 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 I end up having to do it twice almost inevitably. And this spread in particular, I don't think I could bring myself to do this twice. This is my celestial calendar, which lists the new, full, first quarter and third quarter moon phases, as well as other celestial events like eclipses, the blue moon, all of that good stuff. It has 56 circles for each moon phase and celestial event, as well as 11 circles at the bottom that serve as the key for the calendar. So in order to make this, I had to look up when all of these events occur, put them in order, and then I had to come up with a way to represent each thing visually, which is why I have the key. And then I had to plan out how I was going to evenly fit it on one page. Thank you, circle maker. And then of course, I had to go through and fill in each circle with the appropriate symbol to represent what was happening on that day. Was it worth it? Absolutely, I think it looks great and it's super useful. Would I want to do it twice in one year? Absolutely not. So far, that is the biggest benefit that I have found to moving into a binder for my bullet journal. And to color this spread, I mostly used the gold uniball pen as well as Tombow Dew brush pens in the colors 403, 565, and 847. These pages look so good together and it's definitely the spread I'm most proud of. This next spread is kind of a cheat sheet for all of my crystals. And moving into the new year, I wanna be a bit more intentional about using them. So on this cheat sheet, I've included from left to right, the name of the crystal, and then the color of the chakra, the zodiac sign, and the symbol of the element that the crystal is associated with and then I have a symbol representing the best way to charge the crystal in this case amethyst does well in moonlight so I drew a moon and then I have emotional benefits 
physical benefits, spiritual benefits, any crystals that it pairs well with, and then the last column is just general notes. Now, I'm not going to fill out the entire page on camera because even if I sped it up, it would just take a really long time. But when I do the final flip through, you can see what it looks like all filled in. The next few pages are for my weekly journaling prompts. Again, I won't go into too much detail because it's all in my journaling routine video. But basically, once a week, I do a journaling prompt and I usually curate the list myself. So if you are interested in doing the same prompts that I'm doing, I have a Google document linked down below with all of the prompts for the entire year. Or if you want to be surprised every week on my Instagram at tpowsbujo, I'm going to be posting the journaling prompt every single Sunday starting this Sunday, January 3rd. Because I knew I couldn't fit 52 prompts on two pages, I kind of made this little Dutch door situation in the middle. And just like with the crystals, I'm not gonna fill this out on camera, but you'll see the finished product in the flip through. Next is my second to last spread, which is my savings chart. Even though I had good intentions and set this up in last year's bullet journal, I can't say that I stuck with it. This year was crazy to say the least for all of us. We had a ton of unexpected expenses. We had a crazy plumbing incident, a major appliance died, and veterinary costs. Those who watch my vlogs know that my dog Peppy has had some health issues this year. So moving into the new year, I'm doing this savings plan that I've done before. The last time I did it, I saved enough to buy my dream car, which is my Volkswagen Beetle. And I really wanna make this a priority next year. Even if I have to sacrifice not buying something more fun, I really wanna build build up my savings again. That's what this spread is all about. I will link the chart that I use down below. I actually double the amounts in the chart, but basically it's set up for people who get paid every two weeks. And if you follow the chart, every time you get paid, if you take out the amount it says and put it in your savings, you end the year with $2,000 in your savings account. And some years when I'm able to, I like to double it so that I can save $4,000. And every time I make this spread, I like to represent it as a little savings Jar so that every time I get a paycheck and I put a little in my savings, I can color in a line on my jar and slowly watch it fill up throughout the year. This final spread is my grid spacing diagram. This is definitely not a new concept. I make one of these every time I start working with a different sized dot grid. Sometimes these can seem a bit intimidating to set up, but they're actually really easy. So how I usually start is I number the grid across the top and down one of the sides. The dot grid that I've created is 23 squares wide and 38 squares tall. And then I put a line down the middle vertically and horizontally. And then the colored lines are going to indicate how to evenly divide the grid into boxes. So the blue line is if I wanted to divide it into halves. The pink line is if I wanted to divide it into thirds. And the purple line is if I wanted to divide it into quarters. And I do this horizontally and vertically. And what I discovered is how beautifully and perfectly even these dimensions divide up. I wish I could take credit for this and say that I planned this all along, but it was pure dumb luck that these dimensions divided up so perfectly. Couldn't believe it. And of course, we have to break out the binder for the final flip through. And here you can also see the completed crystal and journal prompt spreads if you were curious. I think the color scheme works really well with my new binder and overall I'm really excited to use it all year. Thank you for watching my 2021 setup. I hope you enjoyed it. I just want to remind you that all of the journaling prompts I mentioned are available to download in the description box down below. It's completely free. It's just on my Google Drive so as long as you have the link you can download it. But like I said if you want to be surprised along the way you can follow my Instagram at tpowsbujo where I'll be posting the journaling prompt every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and something new that I'm doing this year is including a hashtag which is hashtag journal with tpow so that if you do decide to go on this journey with me you can find others who have decided to do the same but that's it for today's video tomorrow I'll be posting my January plan with me spoiler alert the theme is polar bears so I hope I'll see you there tomorrow and as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>